Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on chemical engineering thermodynamics. Today we'll see a very interesting problem. Uh, this problem has come in Mumbai University in chemical engineering thermodynamics 2 paper on December 18. The problem is on your screen. It is 3A and it is for 12 marks and yes, it can be quite daunting if you really don't know how to solve it. So pay attention till the end on how I'm solving this problem. Don't leave this video in between. There are many tricks that I'm going to discuss here, which will show you how to solve this problem in a simple fashion. Okay. So the problem, I'll read it out. N-butyl alcohol and N-butyl acetate form an azeotrope at 760 mmHg and 116.8 degrees Celsius. The azeotropic concentration of N-butyl alcohol is 79.01%. The vapor pressure of N-butyl alcohol and N-butyl acetate at 740R, 740.8 and 546.6 mmHg. Find first the Van Laas constant. Two, the vapor composition if the solution behaves ideally. And uh, the third one is azeotrope composition at 76.4 Celsius if the Van Laar constants are independent of temperature. Now, Van Laar's equation is a very good model when it comes to modeling non-ideal VLE and we want to model the TXY curve. So, it's a, it's, it's a very good uh, method of modeling a TXY or a temperature XY non-ideal VLE. Okay, so that way if you go to see this problem is very important from the professional point of view also. Okay, the vapor pressure of N-butyl alcohol and N-butyl acetate are 137.37 and 135.6 mmHg. Now, how do we solve this? First, we need to find out the Van Laas constant. So, what do we do? Well, here it is the Raoult's law for a non-ideal system and a non-ideal liquid and an ideal vapor equilibrium is Y1P is equal to X1 gamma 1 P1 S. Okay, now what we do is the value of activity coefficients at N of N-butyl alcohol and N-butyl acetate are this and this. Now, how do we exactly solve it? We know that Y1 is equal to X1. So what do we have? Gamma 1 is equal to P upon P1S, right? It's very simple. I have just used Gamma 1 is equal to P upon P1S. Now let's demonstrate one such calculation. So for the demonstration, I'll do it for you. So P is 760 mmHg, 760 mmHg divided by P1S is, let's have a look. What is P1S? P1S is 740.8. Okay. So, yeah. So, that's... Seven sixty seven sixty divided by seven forty point. Oops, I seem to be distracted with today seven forty point eight. Yeah, and that's your answer one point zero two five nine. So that's your answer, right? So this is your answer 1.0259 and uh, I have done the same kind of calculations for gamma 2 also. Okay, so after that, what do we have now? Now the Van Laar activity coefficients, okay, the Van Laar activity coefficients are A and B and the Van Laar's equation is on your screen. So this is the Van Laar's equation. Now, when we simplify this, what do we do is basically we simplify the denominator and after simplifying the denominator, we divide it. So, if you simplify the denominator and you divide it, you get this equation ln gamma 1 by over ln gamma 2 is equal to b x2 over a x1. Now, you already have gamma 1 and gamma 2. So, you have b x2 by a x1 as this value. And the reciprocal of this would be AX1 by BX2 and you have this value that is 12.8899. Now you replace these values and you get back A and B. Remember, 
you have ln gamma 1 and ln gamma 2 these values are available to you because gamma 1 and gamma 2 is available to you so put in gamma 1 here put in gamma 2 uh, gamma 2 here gamma 1 here a a x1 over b x2 and b x2 over a x1 solve it you get the value of a and b now it's very important once you have got the value of a and b check back whether you are getting gamma 1 or not this is this is a good method of finding out that you are going on the right track so i have put the value of a and b so i have put the value of a here and i have put a x1 by b x2 here and you get back ln gamma 1 and the accuracy as you can see is very good. Our, the accuracy of our calculations is great. Uh, gamma 1 is 1.02589 and otherwise we had calculated 1.0259. Okay, let's have a look here. Okay, that's it. So a good accuracy. Now for the second question. Now you have for ideal systems you have y1 p is equal to x1 p1 s. So P is equal to X1 P1S plus X2 P2S for an ideal system. The pressure of the system is 700 mm Hg. Okay. Now, how do you get this 700 mm Hg? You replace the value of 0 0.7901, 0 0.7901. Okay. So you put it up here. 0 0.7901, right? And the other one. And then you get the value of P, right? So 0 0.7901 into P1S, P1S is given in the problem and 1 minus 0 0.7901, P2S is also given to you. It is 740 and 500 and odd, some value, okay? So we get 700 mm Hg. From this, we can get, put this 700 mm Hg in this equation and we can get back Y1 and Y2. Remember, you will be tempted to solve this problem by considering the system pressure as 760 mm Hg. Here, what happens is you assume that for an ideal mixture also, it's say the system pressure is 760 mm Hg, which is not possible. Why? Because if you go to see the vapor pressures here, okay, are 740.8 and 546. So any mixture has to have any ideal mixture has to have a pressure in between these two extremes. And since it is a non-ideal mixture, you have a pressure which is 760 mmHg. For ideal system, you will have to first calculate the pressure because it lies somewhere in between that 740 and 500 and then you have to go with your calculation. Well, the third part now, yes, this is a bit tricky. Now, what do you have in part number three? In part number three, it's given... To find the azeotropic composition at 76.4 Celsius if the Van Laar constant are independent of the temperature. The vapor pressure of N-butyl alcohol and N-butyl acetate are 137.37 and 135.66 mmHg. Now how do we solve this? The first thing that we do is, what we have is ln gamma 1 over ln gamma 2 is equal to P2S by P1S. Uh, well, that's a slight correction here, guys. It's S, okay? So, this is S, okay? P2S by P1S. That's not P2 square. That's P1S, okay? So, after that, what we have is ln gamma 1 minus ln gamma 2 is equal to, well, we know P2S and P1S. We calculate the ratio of that and we get this value, 0.9871. Now afterwards, ln gamma 1 minus ln gamma 2, we take the ln of both the sides and we get the value on the RHS. Now we define x1 by x2 is equal to x. So we replace ln gamma 1 and ln gamma 2. We have our Van Laar's equation here. Now in this Van Laar's equation, we put x1 by x2 as x and x2 by x1 as 1 over x, right? So that is what is done here. So you have the equation in this fashion you simplify it okay you simplify the denominators first so you get this equation in such a way now further after simplifying it okay you have this it's the same old what is written here is actually written here itself okay then you simplify it from here you simplify it and you get this ax plus b the whole square ab square okay 
minus b a square x square because there's a minus here and you have this now just to remind you these are the values of a and b and you replace the values of a and b in this equation now that's the trick you do to solve in calculator don't try to simplify it beyond this just put the values and get the equation in this form and then rewrite the equation in this form where you have x here and x here okay and the calculator does it with a lot of ease after that i'll demonstrate it to you alpha x alpha is equal to square root of okay now in the denominator you have 9.3135 and now let's write the numerator so 0.7225 plus 0 0.0135 0 into start your bracket 4.9332 alpha x plus 0.3827 close the bracket and square it okay and press shift press solve and assume a value let's say 0.2 and plus is equal to and there we get our value as 0 0.0411 now i think we have made some mistake here let's check it out it should not come as such a low value so let's check it okay so let's do the necessary checking okay and there we have our mistake we have written multiplied by instead of plus so let's delete it off and put a plus here okay yes put a plus here shift solve and 0.2 is equal to so we have it 0.2864 so i round it off to 0.287 right now you have x1 by x2 as 0.287 so if you add one on both the sides you have one over x2 because x1 plus x2 is equal to one and then you take the reciprocal of that okay so you take the reciprocal of that and after you take the reciprocal of that you get 0.78 and 1 minus x2 is x1 which is 0.22. So as you saw here I have solved this problem with a lot of ease you know just by using the calculator with doing minimal simplification I have solved it out for 12 marks. If you try simplifying it and then putting it in the calculator, don't use the power of calculator to solve the equations. It's going to be a real tough call. So remember one thing always that never try to oversimplify. Simplify it in such a form so that the calculator can solve it. And then afterwards use the power of calculator to get. Now as I have also demonstrated here, the calculator does solve the equations correctly where what did i do i solved the problem okay just a second guys i solved the problem and i recalculated the value of gamma 1 back to demonstrate yes that the calculator really does a good job okay guys so that was all about how to solve and tackle such a tough problem I am currently with only 642 subscribers. My subscriber base should at least be 1000 subscribers so that this project becomes viable. I request you, those who are watching this video, to kindly subscribe my channel. This is very important to me. Only then my effort becomes worth something. Otherwise, if I don't have any subscriber base, this effort is nothing then. Also, if you have subscribed it and you're watching it, I request you to send it to others who would be interested in these lectures and ask them to subscribe it and watch. Subscribe my channel and watch the entire playlist. It's going to be very informative and it's going to be a tremendous learning experience. This is Professor Arvind Prasad signing out. Have a great day. Goodbye.